Hi, I'm Jill from June Taylor, and I'm so excited to show you our new Emily tote. This little tote can be worn around your waist, or you can wear it cross body bag style. It's perfectly sized for a shopping trip, hiking in the woods, or just an outdoor adventure. Each of the kits contains a printed substrate, and that's a sew on the line project, and one of seven colors of our zippity do done zippers. So you'll match your fabric to one of these zippers. You'll also need a parachute buckle. It's so cute when it's made. They sew up in a couple of hours, and we are excited to give you the step-by-step -step video. Let's get started. In your kit, you'll get the printed stabilizer. You'll get one pre-sewn zippity do done zipper, and an instruction sheet. You can either refer to that or watch this video. You'll need to purchase a parachute buckle with a one inch slot opening. Now let's cut our stabilizer. For body A and body B piece, as well as the two wing tabs, we're gonna cut our stabilizer leaving about a half inch margin around the outside of each edge. Next, we're going to cut lining A lining B, strap A, strap B, and the wing rectangles on the line. Now let's get our fabrics prepared. We like to starch our fabrics so they're nice and crisp and they cut well and sew well. We use June Taylor's Starch Savvy. Spray it on, give it a few seconds to let it soak in, and then iron. Starting with your main fabric or the fabric that's going to show on the outside, you're going to cut body A and body B pieces, 9 by 17 and a half and 9 by 12. You're going to do the same cuts from your lining fabric. For your straps, there are actually three pieces. So for the two long ones, you're going to cut a four inch times with a fabric strip. And then for the smaller one, you're going to cut one piece at four inches by seven inches. That's strap B. As far as the wings go, you can use any of the fabrics in your collection. You're going to need four total pieces, three inches by four inches. If you choose the alternative design and to have that triangle inset, you are going to cut a piece of nine by nine of your main fabric another square nine by nine of that contrasting fabric. That's going to be the triangle. And then you're gonna cut a piece of the main fabric again. That's nine inches by 17 and a half. And you're gonna piece these together. So first of all, you're gonna sew the two nine inch by nine inch squares together. And then what you're going to do is sew the nine inch piece by 17 and a half inch piece on top of that. Our first step is we're going to attach wrong sides of the body A stabilizer to the wrong side of our main fabric. And there's three different ways you can attach that. You can either pin it and smooth out the edges. You can use our quilt basting spray to attach those two together. And I would always spray on the stabilizer side, not the fabric side. Or you can use our fabric glue stick. So just put a little bit of glue down and then sandwich the two wrong sides together. If you have chosen to do the triangular inset, what you're going to do is still layer your stabilizer to your fabric wrong sides together, but first center that dot dashed line right on the contrast triangle. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the lining. We're gonna attach the wrong side of the stabilizer to the wrong side of our lining fabric. And again, you can use any method, either pin, use quilt basting spray, or the fabric glue stick. Our next step is we are going to pin body A and lining A together. Right sides of fabric will be facing each other. So the stabilizer will be on the outside. Once we pin that in place, we are going to sew through all layers on the dotted line, leaving the top edge open. As you sew on that dotted line, make sure you back tack at the beginning and the end. Now we're going to cut all the way around on the solid line. Note that top edge stays open. 
Now we're going to do trimming around all the corners. And we want to be trimming so that when we turn right sides out, we'll get nice crisp corners. Be very careful when you're trimming not to go through your stitching lines. Now that our trimming is done, we're going to turn right sides out. To get those corners nice and crisp, you may need to use some kind of a wooden stick with a beveled edge or something that has a little bit of a point to it to really get those crisp corners. When you have all the corners turned right sides out, you are now going to press body and lining piece A. We don't want to hold the iron onto the substrate too long because it may actually melt to our fabric. Once our pressing is done, we're going to baste across that top open edge. Repeat these same steps for body B and lining B. Working with right sides up, we're now going to install our zippity do done zipper. So what we're going to do is open the casing on zippity and center it over the top edge of body A. So the top edge is the edge that we basted it together. And then we're going to sew that in place with a straight stitch right on the edge of zippity close to the fold line. Now we're going to do the same with body B and lining. So working with right sides up, we're going to open the casing of zippity and we want to now center body B into the casing so that the right and left edges match up with body A piece. And then go ahead and pin that in place and top stitch right on the edge of zippity casing. Once Zippity is installed, you can embellish the casing of Zippity Do Done using beautiful machine stitches, ribbons, or in this case, we're using a strip of fabric. We've just simply cut a strip, pressed the edges under, and we're going to top stitch that strip right over the casing of Zippity Do Done. So we'll do one on the top and one on the bottom casing. After we've decorated Zippity's casing, we now want to sew across the zipper itself. And we want to do that to prevent the pull from coming off as we finish our construction of this bag. And make sure you do that on both sides. Once the zipper is secure, you can cut the edges of Zippity flush with your body A and body B bag piece. Now let's set our body A and B piece aside and begin working on the straps. Let's take strap A and what we're gonna do is overlap the printed intersecting area of the two straps and we're going to secure those. You can zigzag across that area or do a couple sets of double stitching. We just wanna make sure that those two strap stabilizer pieces stay intact nicely. Now we're going to take our four inch fabric strips and we're going to join them together. And we want to do this with a mitered joining so that our strap is nice and strong. So layer your two fabrics together as you see here. And then you're going to be sewing a diagonal line from corner to corner. We like to mark that line and then sew. Trim to a quarter inch seam allowance and now press open. Now we're going to press wrong sides together on the long edges of our strap to create a center reference line. After all that pressing is done, open out the strip and press the outside edge 
toward that center reference line on both sides, top and bottom. Measure around your waist or crossbody. Add eight inches to that measurement and then cut both your fabric strap and your stabilizer to that dimension. Now open up your fabric strap and insert the stabilizer down the center. Then fold, fold again, pin if you like, and then top stitch down each of the long edges. Now we're going to take the tongue buckle and starting from the back side of the tongue buckle, we're gonna feed one end of strap A through the top slot, as you see here. And then from the front, feed the same end through the bottom slot. On the same end of that strap, we're now going to fold it over twice. And then we're gonna sew two parallel lines about a quarter of an inch apart to secure those ends. You can also use a zigzag stitch if you prefer. We just want a nice durable stitching there. We're now gonna do the same thing for the shorter strap B. When we have that done, we are going to insert it into the back of the latch buckle. So to do that, take your shorter strap B and starting from the back side of the latch buckle, feed one end through the center slot. From the front, feed that same end through the bottom slot. Then we're going to align the raw edges of the strap and sew together to secure. We're now ready for our two wing tabs. What we're going to do is take our fabric rectangles and put two of them right sides together. We're going to put the wing rectangle on one side and the wing tab with the dotted lines on the other side. Pin those four layers in place and let's go to our sewing machine and we're only going to sew the two angled lines on the right and left. Leave the top and bottom open. Now that our sewing is done, trim on all four solid lines. Repeat this same set of steps for the second tab. Now take strap A and between the fabric layers of the wing, feed the raw end of strap A through the open larger side of the wing. Align the strap edge with the short edge of the wing and sew on the dotted line. We suggest you backstitch across that entire line again for extra durability. Now you can turn the wing right sides out and press. And then I would baste through all layers at the raw edge. When that's done, repeat the remaining steps for strap B. Now we're going to take our main body piece out and we're going to attach our wings. To do that, we want to stitch them in place on the right side of body B, one inch below the edge of the zippity do done casing. So measure an inch down, place your wing right on the edge of body B and top stitch that in place. Do the same for both sides. Make sure that the front side of each buckle piece is facing up before you sew. Next, we're gonna sew our triangle corners. To do that, we're gonna put right sides together and fold the triangle corners and align the edges. We're gonna sew in a half inch seam allowance starting from the outside edge, sewing in toward the center of the body. 
Repeat that for the remaining side. Now let's fold our top edge of body A on top of zippity and align edges. Let's take a look at our zipper pull and make sure that it's a few inches away from where we're going to sew our seam. Sew from the top down across zippity and stop a half inch away from that bottom edge. And that's important to know for when we turn the bag right sides out. If you'd like to, you can double sew over that to make it extra durable. Now we want to unzip zippity about one to two inches so that when we're done, we can turn right sides out after sewing is complete. Working with right sides together or the lining side out, make sure to tuck your straps into the project away from the edges to make sure that they don't get caught in that sewn seam. We're going to fold body B over body A and align all edges. The bottom corner seams of body A should be centered right in the bottom rounded corners of body B. At the corner that's closest to zippity, the half inch tab on body A will hang a little bit past the edge and that's going to help prevent some excess bulk from occurring. So with a half inch seam allowance around the entire edge, making sure to ease around that rounded corner area and then back tack at both ends. If you want to make a double stitching line and go over the top for extra durability, now would be a good time to do that. Open the rest of zippity, turn your project right sides out, and if necessary, use a pointed tool to create those sharp corners. And your bag is done. Place your bag around your waist or cross body, buckle it, and then adjust the strap for fit. And here it is, our finished Emily tote. Is that not great? I can't wait to wear it and make a few for my friends. Remember to send us photos of your finished Emily tote.